The 6K 32 inch display race is finally starting to heat up. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the LG 32 inch ultra fine Evo 6K display with Thunderbolt 5. This is model 32U990AS. So in this video, we're gonna talk about everything I like about this monitor, as well as a couple things with this monitor that drive me absolutely crazy. I do wanna say thank you to B&H for loaning me this display to review. I'm gonna be doing a lot more display reviews now. So if you got any other models you want me to check out, make sure you leave a comment. The LG Ultra Fine is a 6K display with a resolution of 6,144 pixels by 3,456 pixels. 60 hertz refresh rate, which some people are gonna be upset about. To me, 60 hertz is just fine when you're talking this pixel dense of a display. So this is super sharp, super pixel dense. It doesn't matter how close you sit to the display. It's still gonna look really great. And I love that everything on it from text to videos are so sharp to look at. You can use this with the monitor stand it includes, or it also has a base 100 by 100 mount on the back of it. If you wanna use your own ergo arm or something like that. The stand looks cool. It's got this wide and flat look to it but it is a little bit hard to press down on. You need to make sure you really get a good grip on the display. And I find myself wishing that you could adjust this a little bit lower based on how high my desk actually sits off of the floor. Also, this stand does allow you to spin it and go into vertical orientation, but it just barely clears. So you gotta be kind of careful if you wanna use this in vertical mode, and you will need to use your computer's display settings to change it into vertical mode. But the stand does allow you to very easily adjust the tilt on the monitor, although I think it could also go down a little bit farther, and you can also change the height of it, and you can always rotate it as well. On the back, there's tons of ports, which is super nice because you can use this as a KVM. This is a Thunderbolt 5 monitor technically, but it also has a display port and an HDMI port. We're using it with HDMI to send display to it right now off my Mac Mini. You also get two Thunderbolt ports, so you can daisy chain this to another 6K display if you'd like. I tested this out and it works great using it with the ASUS monitor. Then there's an additional three USB-C ports on the bottom of it too. And you've also got the joystick for controlling all the parameters of the monitor. Plenty of ports on this, so whether you wanna plug it directly into your Mac with a Thunderbolt 5 cable, you're gonna get 97 watts of power going into it that way, and it also works with older Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3 Macs. Or if you wanna use HDMI or DisplayPort, plug this into a gaming computer or plug this into a game console or really any device, tons of flexibility with this, and you can easily change just by using the joystick on the back of it. And I like that the joystick is hidden. There's no visible chin on this, although there is a little bit of a black bezel on the side of it, which I didn't find to be too big of a deal. One thing that does bother me about this monitor is the whole body of it is made of plastic, and this is pretty common for most of the newer LG monitors. This one does have the ultra fine designation, and I expected it to be pretty much on par with the quality of the older LG ultra fine 27 inch monitor that was a little bit heavier duty, had a little bit heavier stand. Unfortunately, the build quality of this does not feel on that same level. It feels a lot flimsier and a lot shakier, which is too bad with what they're charging for this monitor. Next thing to note about this display is it is 6K. It's super sharp, and it's also supposed to be very color accurate. You also can always calibrate this using LG's color calibration software, but it took me a little bit to get the colors on this the way I liked them. I had to do quite a bit of testing with different color profiles on it, and it's got a couple of studio profiles that are designed to look like the Apple displays, and you can kind of go through them. There's a lot of customization you can do with this, either using the monitor, or you can also put LG switch software on it, but this takes a little bit of extra work to get this dialed in the way that you like it. And with the Apple Studio display, I just plugged it in and it looked super accurate, just like any of Apple's other displays. And the Studio display also supports True Tone with the camera on it, which is nice for adjusting the display depending on your room's ambient lighting. So that's definitely a feature I miss with this LG one. There's also no built-in microphone, no built-in webcam on the Ultrafine 6K, which is okay because the ones on the studio display are definitely not perfect, but just know you are gonna need to get those separately depending on the way that you use your computer. Also, another thing to note, this has built-in speakers. They sound okay. They're not as good as some other built-in monitor speakers, but you can download the LG Switch software and you can actually adjust the screen brightness and you can adjust the volume of the speakers just using your Mac keyboard. This is a feature I could not get to work on the Asus display. So LG is definitely winning a little bit in that regard with a customization, but it is a little bit annoying if you wanna use the joystick to change other parameters on it. Let's talk more about the color quality. This is a matte finish, which some people are gonna like and some people aren't gonna like. The Asus one also has a matte finish, but I felt like the matte finish on the Asus display wasn't quite as noticeable as this one. So there were definitely some times when I felt like the colors looked a little bit washed out and it was a little bit low on contrast, but after spending some time dialing in the colors the way I'm used to them, with the settings on the monitor, I was able to get it where I was happier with it. And I also ended up changing the profile of the display. 
One thing that's really important to note is if you change the profile on this to something like the P3 color gamut is the one I ended up using, you need to actually get into your max settings, go to the display and change it to P3 on that as well. If you use the stock setting there, it's not gonna look right. You're also probably gonna need to adjust the brightness of the monitor too, because the stock brightness settings on this monitor are around 40, which is not bright enough at all. I also noticed even after dialing this in, there was still a slight green tint to it, so I had to bring the greens down a little bit. We talked a little bit about the ultra fine designation for this display and LG has given more monitors the ultra fine designation over the years. I wish they would reserve ultra fine for meaning the displays that are basically Apple displays, but with LG branding on it. The next thing to note is the power adapter is not built into this display. So you're gonna have to store this underneath your desk or somewhere behind the display. It definitely takes up quite a bit of space. Also, we talked about the speakers. The speakers sound okay, but they don't sound as good as the built-in ones on even a MacBook Air. So if you're buying this to use it with the computer, I would really recommend getting a stand for your MacBook Air or your MacBook Pro so you can still use the speakers built into it if you don't want to go out and buy new speakers. And you could also still use the webcam built into your MacBook as well if you'd like. Also, the Atom Audio D3Vs are another speaker I've used with a lot of my desk builds, and those are USB. They sound great. You could always put those on one of the USB ports on the bottom of this. I really recommend picking up the Atom Audios. I've got a video where I talk about those speakers. The LG Ultra Fine is also priced kind of interestingly. This one comes in at $2,000, and somehow the Asus ProArt display is just $1,300. This one definitely looks sleeker than the ProArt, but I feel like the ProArt has better color right out of the box, although the monitor itself doesn't look quite as sleek. And this one's technically Thunderbolt 5 and the ProArt is Thunderbolt 4, but it really doesn't matter because both of them can handle the 6K data rate, and both of them can also be daisy-chained to multiple monitors. I do want to say Apple's Pro Display XDR is $5,000, Plus you gotta spend extra money if you wanna get a stand with it. So when you compare this to that monitor, this price does seem a lot better. This one is also gonna be a little bit more expensive than the 27 inch Apple 5K studio display. I would go kind of back and forth on if I would prefer this over the studio display. On one hand, I really like the 32 inch size. Gives you a lot more screen real estate for doing things like video editing where you have tons of windows open. And I find that I was able to use one 32 inch display by itself and still be super efficient and super productive. With a 27 inch display, I feel like that's never enough space for me to be fully productive. But with the Apple one, you're getting some nice things like the built-in webcam, better sounding built-in speakers and probably better colors right out of the box. LG is definitely a great monitor with no complaints on the sharpness other than the matte texture. And I also found that after I dialed in the colors, I was totally happy with this. It just took me about a week or so of using this before I felt like I had finally gotten used to the colors and where I felt like I had messed with enough of the settings on this to get it where I was happy with it. So the Ultrafine 6K is kind of at a weird crossroads right now. It's supposed to be a more premium 6K display than the Asus, but the color accuracy isn't quite as nice. It looks nicer than the Asus, but the construction and build quality of it feels identical to the Asus. Really the main advantages of this monitor over the Asus is the fact that you're not getting buttons on the front like the Asus one, which are super ugly, and you don't get that really ugly brushed metal chin on the front of this. But if I were trying to decide between the LG and the Asus, I would probably recommend just buying the PA32 QCV instead because it's gonna be quite a bit cheaper and give you basically identical performance. The LG Evo 6K is really a game of compromises. Do you want the 6K resolution bad enough that you'll spend some more time dialing in the color? Do you want all the great ports on the back of this so that you can actually plug gaming consoles or do you just want the simplicity of Apple's studio display that just works great when you plug it in? Would I recommend this display? Yeah, I definitely would, but there's a couple things about this that give me enough pause that make me say, you should probably look really closely into the Asus if you're considering buying this because for the price difference of the Asus and the LG, you could get really close to buying a second one of the Asus displays and running dual 32 inch 6K displays is pretty cool for productivity work. Also, I think LG could have put a couple more features in this that really would have raised it higher above the Asus, and they really didn't do anything to this that distinguishes it from the Asus or makes it feel like it's worth the premium. If they had a decent webcam on this, if the speakers were even better, if they had somehow managed to get the power supply in the back of the display, just a couple of features like that would make it a much more intense battle between the LG and Asus display. But overall, this is still a great display, still super sharp. The colors can definitely be dialed in. But I think next time LG needs to step it up another level to make this the kind of display that really sets itself apart from the rest of the pack. What do you think? Would you try the LG Ultrafine 6K display out? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in buying this or any of my other 6K displays, I'm gonna have links to buy all those in the description below. 
Thank you again to B&H for loaning me this monitor. If you've got any other monitors you want me to check out, maybe some on a budget, leave a comment down below and I'm really excited to be testing more monitors out.